Hey, Mike with Vanco here. In today's video, I'll be walking you through how to plan a church event in eight simple steps. So let's get into it. Now, church events are a great way to engage your community, attract new members, and they can even be used as a means of fundraising, depending on the events you might be holding. And so when it comes to planning events, you want to have a step-by-step -step plan to maximize your results, to engage your community effectively, attract new members, and again, maximize the results of fundraising if it's a fundraising event. And so the first step is to determine your target market and the type of event you'll be holding. This is essential because again, if you're holding an event that's meant for families, but your messaging is all about youth groups or targeting that audience, it doesn't really resonate and people aren't gonna show up and attend your event. So again, you wanted to determine what is the type of event, who you wanna invite, who's your target market, and then you'll adjust your messaging and the, maybe even the event itself accordingly. The next step is to determine the budget for your event. And so this can involve several different steps. You need to determine things like, is the event going to be a free event or is it a paid event? Maybe you need to have it be a paid event to compensate for some of the things you're spending on to produce the event. Again, ask yourself the question of, is this a fundraising opportunity? Could you have the ticket prices be a little bit higher for the event? Or again, maybe you're just charging in general and now it's a fundraising opportunity. You also wanna ask yourself if you need volunteers for the event. And then if so, who from your members are going to participate and be great volunteers at the event. You also wanna consider if you need to cater the event. Is it going to be a potluck type of situation where members are going to bring food or bring refreshment themselves? Or are you going to need to cater the event out and compensate the vendors that are providing food and refreshments? On top of that, you also wanna ask yourself where is this event going to be at what type of venue are you going to have it in, as this could adjust the budget you'll need to host this successful event. The third step is to get approval from the church administration to hold the event. Again, you probably don't want a lot of your members just going rogue and holding whatever types of events they want, so you wanna get approval from your church leadership and the administration before holding events. The next step is to determine who the event planner will be. Is it going to be a volunteer? Are you going to hire someone? Is it going to be the person whose idea the event was? There's several different options to consider. On top of that, you wanna make sure that you hire the best event planner. So there's some tips to choosing that planner, things like someone that has great organization skills, they're great with people, they're good with building teams, they're problem solvers, they're great with working with a variety of diverse people. They're good at technology and they understand things like ticketing platforms, scanning apps, and more. You also wanna find someone that knows how to work within a budget because likely you'll have a limited budget to work with with these type of events. The fifth step is to select the best volunteers. Again, similar to choosing the best event planner for your event, you wanna choose the right volunteers. Are they gonna resonate with the people attending the event? Are they people people? Are they good communicators? Do they have that servant leadership type attitude? These are things you wanna consider when choosing volunteers to hold your church events. The sixth step is to choose the date. And so this can be an important step. It may sound simple, but there's several things to consider. Again, when we talked about choosing the right target market and who you're promoting your event to, are they going to be in town? Are they interested in this type of event at that time of year? Are you choosing something like a car wash, but it's the middle of winter? Again, you probably wouldn't do that, but again, these are things to consider when choosing the date for your events. The seventh step is to decide what happens next. And so there's several things to consider after your event is finished. You wanna determine things like, was your event a success? Did you reach your goal that you were striving for? Was the attendance in line with what you were expecting? You also might wanna consider having a post-event survey 
to survey the people that came to your event and find out what their experience was like. Did they enjoy the event? Were there things that could have been better? Do they think you should hold this type of event again? Would they attend a similar event in the future? These are great things to know. And a post-event survey can be a great way to determine the answers to these type of questions. Step number eight is to start planning your next event. And so again, you've determined that information of if your event was a success, you've hold, held these surveys, then you wanna determine if the event is something that you want to do again in the future and add it to your yearly event calendar, or maybe it was a flop and you don't wanna do this type of event again. Take your learnings from this event and apply them to your next event, and you really want to build from event to event. It keeps the excitement high, Maybe you even have the option to get tickets or to sign up for the next event at your current event. Again, just transition people from one event to the next. It can keep the excitement high, keep attendance high, and continue to have your church thrive. And so again, definitely follow these eight simple steps to planning church events, and they can go a long way to help you run successful events at your church to keep your community engaged, attract new members, and raise additional funds if they're fundraising events. But again, hopefully you got a lot of value out of this video, and if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button as it really helps out the channel. But if you're struggling to host events at your church, want to increase giving and increase your fundraising as well, we have a lot of free resources to help you do just that. So if you're looking for more insight and training and tips on improving your giving within your community for hosting successful events and fundraisers and more, check out the links in the description below this video. On top of that, with Vanco Events, we make event planning for churches simple. We can help you streamline the process, simplify ticketing, help you raise additional funds and much more. So if you'd like to learn more about Vanco events and using it for your church events, there'll be links in the description below where you can access more information on that as well. But again, thanks for tuning in and we'll look forward to talking to you soon.